then in Acts, Peter gives us this message. This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Moreover, on my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Now Peter is saying that Pentecost is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. In these words of Peter, the first apocalyptic or apostolic utterance spoken in the power of the divine at Pentecost, we have an authoritative interpretation of the prophecy which he quotes from Joel. He expressly identifies the time and the event predicted by the prophet Joel with the time and the event then actually present, present on the day of Pentecost. The last days of Joel are these days of Peter. That ancient prediction was in part fulfilled. It was receiving its accomplishment before their very own eyes. In the corpus infusion of the Holy Spirit, this outpouring of the Spirit was introductory to other events which would in like manner come to pass soon. The day of judgment for the theocratic nation of Israel was at hand. And ere long the presages of that great and notable day of the Lord would be manifest. It's impossible not to recognize the correspondence between the phenomena preceding the day of the Lord as foretold by Joel and the phenomena described by our Lord as preceding His coming and the judgment of Israel. <clears throat> the words of Joel <clears throat> can refer only to the last days of the Jewish age, which was also the theme of our Lord's prophecy on the Mount of Olives. In like manner, the words of Malachi has evidently referred to the same event in the same point of time, the day of His coming. The day that shall burn as a furnace, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What we have from Joel, Malachi, and Peter, what we have here is a consensus of testimonies that which nothing can be conceived more authoritative and decisive. Joel. Malachi, St. Peter, and the great prophet of the new covenant himself, Jesus Christ. They all speak of the same event and of the same period of time, the great day of the Lord, the parousia, and they speak of them as being near. Why do Christians encumber and embarrass the prediction so plain with suppositions, double references, and ulterior fulfillments. Nothing else will fit this prophecy except that event to which alone it refers and to which it corresponds as the impression with a seal and with a lock and with a key. The catastrophe of Israel and Jerusalem was at hand, long foreseen, 
often predicted, and now imminent. Self same generation that had seen, rejected, and crucified the king would witness the fulfillment of his own warnings when Jerusalem perished in blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Christians today search the internet, they search the newspapers, they search the TV to try to find events happening today that they can say, see, there it is. That's it. They seem to know better than Peter when he says, this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel of those last days. The last days of Joel are these days of Peter in that first century. Those ancient predictions were being fulfilled. It was receiving its accomplishments before their very own eyes through the work of the Holy Spirit. Christians today want to be some kind of prophets. They want to see an oil spill or a tornado or a hurricane and say, see, this is that which is spoken of by the prophets. I think I'm going to stick with what the Bible says and uh, let these Christians waddle off in their delusions. Peace, love, justice, understanding, music, and friends.